Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you again for joining with me on the Word Podcast. We continue examining what the Scripture has to say about what occurred with Jesus after he was resurrected, the various appearances, uh, the various uh, personages. We've seen that there's uh, ladies, groups of ladies, lots of them named Mary, Mary Magdalene. <clears throat> We've seen um, that there were soldiers, there were guards, that literally when they saw the angels, that they passed out in fear. And so we're in the book of Mark now, <clears throat> and we're in Mark chapter 16, and it's Mark's account of what occurred. Now remember, in each one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, gives an account of this time. And some of them have similar uh, accounts, and some have differing. They're not conflicting in any way. Okay? Remember, when the Gospel writers wrote, they were writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and they had particular goals. You have uh, different individuals who are writing, and they're writing to different groups, and they're writing for different purposes. And you see that when you study the Gospels as a whole. And so there's not any conflict. Are there questions we have? Oh, yeah, there's questions we have, particularly related to uh, chronology, sequencing of some things, because you can't get a real clean, real clear, real concise, this is exactly the order of the way that things happen. Uh, you can't get that from the Gospels. The Lord left that uh, sort of uh, up in the air. But he gave, gave us tons of information. And so what we need to do is just say, hey, this is what happened. This is what occurred. I may not be able to tell you exactly what the order of it is because the Lord didn't tell us. But this is what occurred. So here's Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 16, beginning with verse 9. And it says this, Now, after he had risen early on the first day of the week, and that he is the Lord Jesus Christ, after he had risen early on that first day of the week, he first appeared to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. So it tells us right here that the first person he appeared to was Mary Magdalene. Well, that might give us a little help in understanding some of the chronology, okay, what we see over in John. Because in John, John really uh, focuses, uh, focuses on Mary Magdalene. He doesn't even mention the other ladies. And it may be that Mary Magdalene was alone at this particular time. Then she went and got the ladies and brought them back. Or she may have been with the ladies and what we saw earlier in Mark, and I think the last episode, that they took off and she finally decided to go tell the other disciples. We simply don't know the exact details of the chronology of events. But we do know what we're told here. We're told that he first appeared to Mary Magdalene. So who did he first appear to? Mary Magdalene. That is powerful, folks. He did not first, as I've mentioned before, he didn't appear to the political rulers of the day. He did not appear to the religious rulers of the day. He did not even appear to his 11 disciples. He appeared to Mary Magdalene, another disciple. And we forget sometimes that the women were disciples. Disciples just means learners. The 11 apostles, did they have a special place? Oh, yeah. Did the 12th one, Matthias, when they added him? Oh, yeah, no doubt. But he appeared to Mary. He appeared to the woman first. And that is powerful in that society and in our society. But this wasn't just any woman. This was a woman that in the previous life had had seven demons in her. Seven demons. And Jesus cast them out. And we learn that from this verse right here. Verse 10 tells us, She went and reported to those who had been with him while they were mourning and weeping, and so from this verse right here, we learn a little bit about what the uh, the status of the apostles were, what the, the status of the disciples were. We know that they were locking themselves away. We've seen that in John and Matthew, that they were hiding behind locked doors, which was a wise move. Their teacher, their rabbi, had been executed, okay, uh, hand in glove with the religionists and the Roman government. So that's a good time to hide. She reports to them what she had been told and what she'd seen. Verse 11, when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they refused to believe it. <laughs> oh, my. Now, just think that through there, folks. She comes with a report that she has seen Jesus, that he's alive, 
And she had a message because you see this in other gospels, there's a couple of things that she was to tell them. They refuse to believe it. We're not told why they refuse to believe it. They simply refuse to believe it. Could it be because of who Mary Magdalene was? Could it be because she was sort of viewed maybe by them as the one that always was clinging on to Jesus and was always hanging on to and that they're just thinking, well, you know, she's just crossed that line in grieving that she's seeing what she wants to see. And she's always been a little crazy, and I guess some of those demons have come back. <laughs> Don't you know that man will think that way? Well, let's look at these next two verses, and maybe it'll give us a little insight. Mark chapter 16, verse 12. After that, okay, so after that, after they've had the encounter with Mary Magdalene, after they refused to believe it here, after that, he appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking along on their way to the country. They went away and reported it to the others, but they did not believe them either. Now, these right here are the two disciples that we, we often call uh, the ones on the road to Emmaus because that's where they were going. They were on, going to the little town of Emmaus, some, I think, seven miles away, something like that. There's a fuller account of this that we'll get to later, okay? But look what happened here. What Mark was emphasizing was the fact that the disciples had received two separate reports at two different times. Mary Magdalene's would have been earlier in the morning. The two disciples that reported, <clears throat> that would have been much later in the day. <coughs> Excuse me. Because they had walked all the way there. They would sat down and had a meal with Jesus. He vanishes in front of them. And they said, was our heart not stirring while he was telling us these things from the scripture? Then they get up and walk seven miles back. And so it's later in the day when they report. But what is being revealed here is that the disciples did not believe. They didn't believe them either. Now, it's an interesting thing you see here in verse 12. After that, he appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking along on their way to the country. What different form? Different in comparison to what? In contrast to what? Is it different? Because just the way it's flowing right here, is it different from the way that Mary Magdalene had seen him? You know, perhaps, because remember when Mary saw him, according to John, she grabs him and clings to him, and he says, don't cling to me because I haven't ascended to the Father yet. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means he hadn't ascended to the Father yet. Was he going to the Father and then he was going to come back? In a manner of speaking, yeah. He went to the Father, and then he made appearances over the next 40 days here and there. He allowed Thomas to touch him eight days later. Okay, But now he, he appeared to these two disciples in a different form. It appears that, uh, well, here's what we know. We know that when he um, appeared before Mary Magdalene, that it was a somewhat glorified body, okay, in the way they looked. When he appeared to the disciples, he just looked like a normal person. And it was when they were sitting and he broke the bread and gave thanks that they recognized who he was. So he, the different form was he looked more like a man when he appeared to the two disciples. Anyway, I find that sort of interesting and intriguing right there. They go and report what happened. The disciples, the 11, and whoever were with them refuse to believe it. Jesus actually gets on to them later about this, about the fact that they refuse to believe. I tell you what, you know, I don't want to point the finger too quickly because there's way too many truths that we have in the Scripture. That truth be said, we refuse to believe. We actually refuse to read it in the way that it's written, in the way that it was written at that time, in the way that it was received at that time. We don't even want to allow our minds to go where the Word should and is leading us. And so, uh, you know, we need to be careful like that, lest we be like these who did not believe also. Uh, again, I'm Dale. Thank you. We'll keep pressing on next time. I'll see you then.